Oh, hello, Kokomi Swarm. I mean, Dragonfly Swarm. Kokomi is a five-star Hydro character with quite a weird history in Genshin because of her very underwhelming release, her growth after release, her slowly slipping into the meta, and then leading all the way up to present day, wherein she has one of the highest play rates of every character in the game inside of the Spiral Abyss. So, since she's getting her second rerun very soon, I wanted to discuss with you guys the big misconceptions about Kokomi, all the changes that she's gone through since Sumeru came out, and why I personally feel that she's worth pulling for if you were on the fence about doing so. That is not to say that this video will be mostly or even partly about whether or not you should pull for her though, think of this as an objective look at where she currently stands as of Dinjo's release, and how that will affect her moving forward into the future of Genshin Impact. So before I start, I would like to plug my Twitch, because I stream multiple days a week and I would love to see you there. And now, to start this video off by discussing why Kokomi has such an underwhelming past, and how that ties into the present day misconceptions about her. Kokomi came out at a time where players weren't really in need of a healer for any of their content unless they were going up against Corrosion, which even then didn't pose a big enough threat to warrant spending money or prima gems on a dedicated healer such as herself. Thus, she garnered a reputation as the game's best healer that nobody wanted because they didn't need a healer, and her debut banner drowned in an ocean of sadness and despair and pee pee poo poo. And that all lends itself to the biggest misconception about Kokomi, that you should only pull for her if you need a healer because she's just a really good healer. But that is actually not true at all. <laughs> Kokomi actually fills some of the widest range of roles of any character in the game because yes, she can play as a dedicated healer, but she can also play as a very powerful buffer with the help of four-piece tenacity and weapons like Hakushin Ring or Thrilling Tales, all of which synergize very well with her kit, thus allowing you to capitalize on the buffer role quite effectively with her. But beyond that, she also has a very potent impact as a Hydro Enabler because she can effectively keep her Hydro application at 100% uptime whether or not she's on the field, making her invaluable for Freeze teams, Taser teams, some types of Vape teams, etc., all of which teams usually sit towards the top of the meta, meaning they're strong. <laughs> and in terms of combat, she can play as an off-fielder for many of these roles, but for many other roles, she can also play as an on-field as the team's driver, and with the help of her burst, she can deal a decent amount of personal hydro damage while doing so, contributing quite a bit to teams like Taser and Bloom teams, which I will get into in just a second. Now, this isn't at all to say that she doesn't have weaknesses, and unfortunately, Kokomi's weaknesses are the kinds of weaknesses that can't really be solved. She's technically a comfort character, and naturally she has a pretty low investment cap, so there's a tangible limit to how much impact she can have on your account the more you invest in her. And in that regard, as you invest more and more into other similar characters, your Kokomi will become outclassed in roles outside of the healer role. For example, investing into Mona will put her quite far ahead of Kokomi as a buffer because of Mona's nature as, you know, a dedicated buffer. <laughs> and similarly, investing into characters like Singcho and Yelan will very quickly prove more valuable to certain teams that need Hydro enablers because both Singcho and Yelan provide some of the most consistent and high Hydro application in the game, as well as providing multiple other forms of offensive and defensive utility at the same time. Which Kokomi does also do, just not to the same extent, as you continue to equally invest in these characters. But these kinds of weaknesses haven't stopped many people from playing her though, don't get me wrong, because as of patch 2.8, Kokomi sat comfortably as the 5th most popular character in the entire game for Spiral Abyss, with an 83.6% play rate. Probably because she makes team building extremely easy and makes the combat itself very comfortable thanks to her powerful supportive utility and simple kit. And that's one major thing to consider if you're on the fence about pulling for her. Do you care about comfort and ease of use, or high mechanical skill expression and top tier damage ceilings? But as of recent in Genshin Impact, many players have opted for the former, because there's already such a large pool of characters that can slot with Kokomi to compensate for her low impact ceiling, so playing her for the added comfort doesn't hold anyone back from 36 starring the Spiral Abyss in a timely and surprising manner. But I have yet to even brush up on 3.0 Kokomi, and that's where things really begin to take a turn, because for all the points I made regarding her versatility, there is now even more to be said about that, because with the introduction of Dendro, Kokomi has found herself in the middle of quite a few new roles that she works very well with. To start with her most prominent buff, let's talk about the changes to Hydro Resonance. So, originally Hydro Resonance gave what was essentially just a healing bonus, and as much as that did benefit Kokomi, it didn't benefit her nearly as much as the new Hydro Resonance does, wherein she and her entire team receive a 25% max HP bonus. Now, not only does she enjoy increased healing when slotted with another Hydro unit, which isn't uncommon for Kokomi, but she also enjoys an increase to her entire kit's scaling, because a lot of her damage modifiers are based on her HP, making HP stats generally more valuable to stack up than healing bonus stats. This will greatly benefit her contribution in popular teams like Double Hydro Taser, Mono Hydro Teams, Double Hydro Vape Teams, etc., and thus you can expect her to have an even greater edge as a unique Jack of All Trades Hydro unit on your account. Additionally, she is currently one of the best characters and one of the core characters to slot inside of Bloom Teams now that Dendro is in the game. And this pertains to the new roles she's gained access to because in standard Bloom Teams and Fridge Bloom Teams, Kokomi is actually typically going to act as the main reaction carry, in which you stack a lot of EM on her so
so that she can trigger powerful bloom explosions one after another on enemies. And this works so well for her because she essentially has 100% uptime hydro application and healing, which allows Kokomi to sustain herself and her teammates from the bloom damage while also applying just enough hydro to cause a lot of blooms, but not so much that hydro overtakes the dendro aura. And that's a lot of elemental gauge mechanic stuff. Essentially, Kokomi just conveniently works well with bloom teams, and although they're not the strongest teams in the game, most of that only comes from the fact that we don't have a dendro character with fast enough dendro application to keep up with its damage potential yet. Down the line though, Kokomi's relevance in this team could become significantly larger if we get our hands on a character that can apply dendro fast enough. And generally, the same can be said about hyperbloom teams, although Kokomi will play more of a traditional role in these teams, wherein she's mostly just there for her ability to apply constant off-field hydro while buffing and or healing her team. Once again, Kokomi works more conveniently in hyperbloom teams than most other hydro units because she provides comfort and utility to the team at the same time, while also applying just enough hydro to create bloom seeds without completely burning through the dendro auras. Not that she's completely irreplaceable in hyperbloom, especially not considering she's technically only providing hydro and heals, but she's a dominant pick nonetheless. But even then, I do want to reiterate a few important points and discuss my personal thoughts on Kokomi as opposed to other hydro characters, because as I said earlier, she does suffer from being replaceable in most teams. The hydro character roster is growing quite rapidly, and almost all of them are regarded as top tier units from some aspect of their gameplay, which means Kokomi innately has a lot of competition when it comes to what characters most players will be slotting as their hydro unit, and for rough examples, if you wanted Kokomi because you needed a healer, Barbara fills that role to a functional extent. And while yes, Kokomi is clearly a cut above Barbara, that doesn't mean you can't save your money and use Barbara rather than Kokomi to fulfill your hydro or healing needs. And then obviously in terms of playing as a buffer, as powerful and flexible as Kokomi can be, Yelan and Mona are simply stronger in these regards because their kits are designed and tailor-made to fill the buffer role. So unless you wanted the added survivability that comes with Kokomi's buffing potential, you would generally find Mona or Yelan to be stronger picks. So there are definitely areas in which Kokomi is still outclassed in some regards when you need a specific role filled, but that kind of just comes with the territory of a jack-of-all-trades unit. What doesn't come with the territory though, or rather the edge that Kokomi surprisingly has over most Hydro units is her newfound dominance in Dendro teams. Her kit provides exactly what Bloom teams need to thrive, and most importantly, she can do her job to its fullest extent without completely burning through Dendro auras, which would throw off the team's ability to spawn Bloom seeds on the ground, and in some cases, this could lead to completely stifling the team's DPS. Additionally, regarding Dendro teams, it can be a bit difficult to slot survivability units currently, so Kokomi's ability to fill that role is quite valuable, especially given that survivability is just one of many aspects she provides to these teams. So, in 3.0, with the changes to Hydro Resonance and the introduction of Dendro teams, Kokomi has absolutely received buffs, directly and indirectly. And these buffs are difficult to ignore considering how much more competitive they make Kokomi with her fellow Hydro units. So in general, I'm inclined to say that as much as she was an underrated character before 3.0, she's even stronger now, and that would objectively warrant a larger group of people to pull for her, especially when you consider the fact that these buffs weren't just to her existing playstyles, but also to new playstyles that she's only just gained access to. So do with all of that information what you will, because at the end of the day, Kokomi may be a replaceable unit in most teams, but she provides unmatched versatility and comfort to your account. Not unlike the comfort that a character like Zhongli can provide with his powerful shielding. So, if you enjoyed this video or it helped you in any way, don't forget to leave a like and consider subscribing because it very much helps my channel. And also consider joining my Discord server because myself and my community would love to see you around. Anyways, I'm off to go blend in with the Kokomi community for just a few more weeks, and then I'm home free! <laughs>